gamers, we're in a different spot in our house today because unfortunately the winter weather combined with some flooding has chased us out of our basement. But we're still here making great content for you guys. Just so you know, we may have a video that's a split of us filming uh, upstairs and in the basement. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll be back down there uh, sooner rather than later. Let's hope they're good at what they do. <laughs> so we got to use some uh, older equipment just because of some of the background noise from that, but you should still be getting a good quality video. With that being said, let's get into the game itself. So today we are going to be reviewing Legendary Big Trouble in Little China. Now, this was Julie's idea. She wanted to play some more Legendary games, and uh, we now have another extra release for you guys this, uh, this Tuesday. So uh, if you're watching it, that is actually... Uh, today. <laughs> now the game is designed by Rob Hainso, this version of the game, and I'm going to toss it over to Julie, who will tell you more about the game itself. But before I forget, this is published by Upper Deck Entertainment. Uh, so this is another cooperative game like the other legendaries, a uh, deck building game that plays uh, two to five players, uh, about ages 14 and above. I, Like we've said with the other legendaries, I think it probably could be played by... Um, by kids a little bit younger than that if they uh, they understand the mechanics yeah. uh, and it plays uh, in 30 to 60 minutes I think in our case we've it's been closer to 60 than 30 but mm -hmm. I think the rating for this one's more because it's based on the movie and the movie uh, in some areas has uh, our rating so that's why you get the 14 and above now just to note the reason why this game is two to five players is the cards are based on a lot of heavy interaction with players like passing stuff to a player to your left and things like that. We're not really going to talk about that in like the how to play, but that's the reason why it's a little different than the other legendary game. Now, what are you doing in this game? Well, you are trying to defeat the mastermind. This is a deck building game. You're going to have villains that show up. You're going to have heroes that you can acquire. You're going to build your deck. You're going to beat up on the villains. You're going to beat up on the mastermind before he completes his evil scheme, just like other legendary games. So with that being said, Julie, what are we going to do right now? We're going to grab our drinks. We're grabbing our drinks, grabbing our best friend. We're going to take it to the table. We're definitely taking it to the table. We've played a lot of Legendary recently. Yeah, I like it that way. <laughs> well, hopefully there'll be a new Legendary game coming out uh, that you'd like to play, or I'm going to have to go get Legendary Encounters Alien. Yeah, Alien's not really my... But I'd try it. I mean, we could just keep playing the same legendary games we love. Now we're going to take a look at the components for Legendary Big Trouble in Little China. You'll notice that there are a lot of cards, so I've had to use the playmat, which is the first component that we have, as a place to display the cards. It's rather big, doesn't fit easily on camera. Now, with that being said, we'll start by taking a look at the generic cards that you're going to be starting with, and you can always recruit. So let's start with Uncle Chu. For those of you that do know uh, Legendary, this is your standard hero that you can recruit for the cost of three. They are typically always available, as you can tell by the giant stack. We've got the Chang Sing Warriors and the Chang Sing Strategists. These two cards make up a large part of your base deck, with the warrior being the fight and the strategist being recruitment. Now here we've got three examples of a new type of hero, the mediocre hero. So let's take a look at them. Now they are put into the deck randomly of each player. Each player does get two of them. So for the reluctant hero, Jack Burton, he gains plus one star if one or more villains have captured a bystander. Now the mastermind does not count. For the Long Hauler, which is the Pork Chop Express, gets plus one if there is a villain in the streets. Of this case, if this space was occupied, obviously not by a mastermind for those of you that know the game. Well, you get your plus one. And in the case of the lawyer, Gracie Law, you would get plus one star if there's at least one villain in Chinatown, which represents these two squares. Now, the heroes that are going to make up the hero deck are all of the characters from Big Trouble in Little China. So we've got Eddie, the badass maitre d. Now he's got some really cool stuff. I want to make, go over this quickly. I don't really want to go into too much detail. Here we've got Wang Chi and uh, probably the real hero uh, of the movie. He does all of the really cool stuff. We've got the green-eyed bride, Eddie's uh, fiance, Miao Yin. We have, of course, Jack Burton's beloved truck, 
and almost a character in the movie itself, the Pork Chop Express. Gracie Law, the Fighting Bride. Well, that's just this card. All these cards that we have out here, by the way, are their main hero cards. So we have the rest, Henry Swanson, whose main hero card is the rescue, lets you rescue some bystanders. Pretty cool card. We've got Margo, whose hero card is Big Break. And uh, Julie's enjoyed playing this one. What old Jack Burton says, Jack Burton, who is uh, definitely the most iconic character, probably besides uh, Lopan. And of course, the game would not be complete without Egg Shen. Now, let's take a look at the villains and then we'll go into the masterminds. So in Big Trouble in Little China, you've got three types of henchmen villain, the Wing Kong thugs, the Ceremonial Warriors, and the Lords of Death. Not going to pick them up, I just want to kind of crash through the components now. Here is a little bit more fun to take a deeper look at. Now, we have four villain groups, and I've taken out two cards because the villain cards aren't all the same. Now, there are multiples of each in the villain decks. We have the Monsters, which you can see by the Guardian and the Bug Monster, the Tonfa Guard, and the Master Cleaver, who are part of the Wing Kong Gang. We've got Warriors of Low Pan, so his mystical villains, which are, you got the Spirit Warriors and Battle Armor Lightning, so Lightning all powered up. And then you can see sort of another version of Lightning here with the other villain group, the Wing Kong Exchange, Lightning CFO. And then you've got his other villain, uh, well, his other henchman, Thunder, as public relation. Both of these guys are in the Wing Kong Exchange. Now, for the other villains that you can have, there are the five different masterminds. And just to note, there is a way for you to play versus Sorceress Lopan and David Lopan, which is pretty cool. But that's a big part of the game. Now, we have David Lopan as a mastermind. And just a quick breakdown of how the masterminds work. You will see what group of villains they always lead and what happens when you happen to draw a master strike from the villain deck. Don't worry, we're going to do a real quick version of the setup. So we've got Ching Dai, which is another mastermind. This evil looking, evil statue that looks a little like Buddha, but not really. We've got the six shooter mastermind, so one of the standout villains from the Wing Kong gang. And of course, got to pick him up, David Lopan, the sorcerer himself. Now, you can see the two cards we have for the scheme twist and the master strike here. You can notice the amount of schemes we've got in the game. Count them out one, two, three, four. 12. So there's a total of 12 schemes. That's pretty cool. Then you've got your wound cards, which you'll take uh, if you happen to get a wound. And then, of course, the bystanders. And that's it, guys. We've taken a look at all the components for legendary Big Trouble in Little China. I'm going to do a very quick setup of the game and then uh, at the same time do a quick version of uh, how to play. Just go through the sequence of events and then we'll be back with our review. So keep it right here as we board the Pork Chop Express and move on to the next part of the video. Now we're going to take a quick look at how you set up Legendary Big Trouble in Little China. This is going to be a fast version of the setup. If you guys want to see stuff in more detail, there will be some cards popping up that will take you back to the reviews and how to plays that we did on other legendary games. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the scheme, place it in the scheme position. Now we will find the number of scheme twists that we need on the scheme here. It says 10. Now there are, there are special rules with regards to the setup or something happens, so make sure you read that. Now if a scheme twist comes out of the villain deck, follow the instructions on the card and it tells you how you will lose the game. Now, I already have the schemes with that I need. There are a total of 10 of them, so I'm just going to place them face down now for the villain deck. Now, each game you're going to have to have five master strikes. Those go into the villain deck. You will set up the mastermind that you're fighting. In this case, I've picked David Lopan. Now, he will always lead the warriors of Lopan, and I have them right here, so they will go into the villain deck. We'll cover that in a second. Now, if you open the dry master strike, follow the instructions on his card. Now, there are these mastermind tactic cards that you have to defeat. You'll just shuffle them up, quickly place them underneath Mr. Lopin. Now, we'll get to the rest of the villains shortly. I'm just going to get the bystanders out 
the wounds out just like you guys saw on the components if you watched it. Now I'm doing a two player setup here. So that means there is going to be two bystanders that go into the villain deck as well. We then have, we need to be facing and I'll double check right here. And if you're just curious, you've got a nice quick setup guys. So there's one henchman villain group and two villain groups tells you the number of heroes to place into the hero deck. Now in this case, we've got our two villain groups, one determined by the mastermind, the Warriors of Lopan. We have the Wing Kong gang. And for the henchman villain, we've got the Lords of Death. They now make up the villain deck. I'm not shuffling this because I'm just trying to do this as quickly as possible. Now you're gonna take your Uncle Chu cards and place them right here. You then need to pick five heroes. In this case, I've picked Wang Chi, who will go in the hero deck as well as Jack Burton. Now check the rules. There are some special rules for Jack Burton and Wang Chi as they have some cards that work when specific characters like Gracie Law, who is also one of the heroes I picked this going in, or Miao Yin are in the deck. Next we'll add in the Pork Chop Express, and then we're gonna add in Eddie. So we've set up our villain deck, we've set up our hero deck. Now each player is going to start with eight Chang Sing Strategists, four Chang Sing Warriors, and two mediocre heroes making up your deck. Now, how do you play the game? Well, I'm just gonna place these down here right now. I'm gonna go here and just pick some random heroes, get them out into the HQ, because you're gonna start with five heroes in the HQ dealt from the top of the hero deck. But I wanna make sure you guys see some variety and I'm only gonna be using one player just to teach because it's very simple and straightforward. Now, what happens is you shuffle your cards And start with six. This becomes our regular pile. There becomes our pile of cards. And we take a look at what we have. First thing we do is we reveal a villain from the villain deck. Now, this is interesting. The villains have different abilities on them, so ambush means this happens right away. So it says if the current player has five or more cards in their victory pile, which means defeated villains or mastermind tactics, they must discard a non-gray hero. Well. We don't have that. There are also villains in here, if we take a look, that may have, that have specific things written on them, like to fight the smoke staff guard. They also might have a fight effect, such as if you fight, put the top bystander of the bystander deck on top of the villain deck. So there's ambush, fight, and then escape, meaning, and what escape means, is that as you draw more villain cards, your villains move through the cities or in different locations, which may correspond to your cards. If you get to the point where your area here is full, and we're just flipping them over, they're all warriors, a little pen. Don't forget, I did not shuffle. What will then happen is one guy will escape, and then with regards to an escaping villain, you would have to then KO a hero worth six or less from the HQ. Now, that's just how it works, and each turn we're gonna be drawing a new card from the villain deck. Now what do I get to do in my turn? Well, in this case, I have two fight. I need six fight to beat him. These are useless and are essentially just discarded. I have a total of four. Well, I've got four recruitment points, so I can pick what I'd like to spend. In this case, I'd buy the Pork Chop Express and Gracie Law, add them to my discard pile, draw another six cards, And there's my hand. You then refresh the HQ, and it would be the next player's turn where they would start by drawing a card from the villain deck. And now we'd continue on like this until the mastermind is defeated. Once all four mastermind tactics are defeated, you then go into the final showdown where you see who gets to get the final hit on Lopan and collect him for their victory points. You can find those rules uh, in the rule book. Essentially what you do is you just, everyone gets one last turn and the person with the most fight wins. You don't draw any villains. The game is over. You've essentially beaten the game. It's just trying to determine who's going to get this extra, in the case of Lopan, six points. And that's how you do it. That's how you set up and that's how you play legendary Big Trouble in Little China. And now we're going to go on to a review.
of the game. So legendary, big trouble in Little China. What did you think of the game? Uh, so we, I had never seen the movie. I think you'll see if you look at past reviews that uh, Jason decided to, uh, to buy the movie, put it on. I fell asleep on it. I did enjoy the other game that we played and reviewed. You can check out yeah. the, uh, you can check out the game. It actually probably will be one of the videos at the bottom, right? Yeah, there'll be a suggestion at the bottom. And I might put a card in there that'll pop up right about now that will take you to our review of Big Trouble in Little China by Everything Epic. Pretty cool game, actually. So, so now we're playing yeah, this one. <laughs> so that being said, uh, I think Jason's figured out that I like legendary games, and uh, he's come up with a couple different version, versions of them uh, that we've seen, we've reviewed on the, the channel. And, and spoiler alert, I like legendary games, so you'll probably won't be surprised with uh, the, what I have to say about, uh, about the game in the review. Uh, so for me, this is another another good version of, of them. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. I have to say, though, it's probably on the easiest version that we've played. I don't know if you agree. It, it could be the easiest version. I think it may be just the schemes that we've played so far. I mean, the first time we did play the game, you did find it very challenging because of like the Jack Burton cards that made you get rid of your great heroes, but we still managed to pull out the, the victory. I do think it's easy, like she says, or at least feels that way, because of the opportunity to KO heroes. And there are a lot of cards that really let you slim down your deck very quickly. Yeah, as opposed to others, and I think we've we've commented negatively on other uh, other legendary versions that... Uh, it wasn't legendary, so I don't mean to cut you off. It was Harry Potter that were really commented okay. about not being able to KO cards. Uh, so for this... Uh, I'd say it's another great version. If you if you like this movie, if it's it's one of those uh, movies that you love, I definitely say you know, and you're looking for a new version. I definitely say go and pick it up. For me, it isn't my favorite theme. Uh, there are other versions out there that I'd probably want to pull out and 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 play again before this one. Um, but it was fun. Uh, yeah. I enjoyed it. No, it was definitely, I think the biggest frustration you had was just the way some of the cards interact with each other. And like you said, the theme is cool. It's well done. But it's definitely not my favorite version of the game either. And the one thing I would have to say is depending on the price that you're able to find the game for, uh, it's typically priced along the same lines as Buffy the Vampire Slayer. However, you get a lot more content in Buffy compared to Big Trouble in Little China. I'd say, you know, we, we played yesterday, we, we played a fair bit of Legendary yesterday. It was a good day for me. <laughs> uh, we played, we played uh, uh, this version, and we also played uh, the Marvel version again with friends. And playing the Marvel version again reminded me that while this is a good version, um, I, do prefer, I do prefer the Marvel version and, and definitely prefer mm -hmm. Buffy and X-Files more yeah. than this one. Well, I think the reason for that is the system was really you know, designed around Marvel, like Legendary Marvel, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm mistaken, feel free to let me know in the comments below, was really the first game in this system. So everything else is sort of an adaptation of it. Legendary Encounters was different because it was Alien that they decided to design that around. So they took the base system and really changed it up. And there's a lot of great things about this game. I like the way you have higher player interaction. You KO cards. It's definitely probably the most competitive out of all of the legendary uh, games that we've played. With this one, there's a lot of things that you can do to sort of screw over other players to make sure you get the most victory points, which isn't necessarily very fun, but there's also some other really cool cards that do things that you don't see in any other game. Like I really like Gracie Law's card, for example, Smooth Move, that lets you recruit, fight, and rescue a bystander. It actually made one of the scenarios we were playing way too easy. I think that was the one where there are it's like almost foraging for sacrifices. If you play with Gracie Law, I think it's almost a gimme. But with that being said, I think it's time for us to move on to our score of the game. We've said what we like. What we don't like is really maybe the theme and the competitiveness. So, Julie, what is your score for the game? It's a 7.5. I'd agree. It's a 7.5. Solid game. Never going to complain about it coming out to the table. But it's never something that I'm, you know, well, I shouldn't say never. It's something that I would pick up and put on the table if I'm in the mood for it. But if she says, hey, let's play a different version, I'm not going to say no, we need to play this one. 
And definitely, bang for your buck wise, go with Buffy. There are so many characters in that game. You can also probably find a, a link to our Buffy video that might be there or just take a look at the channel. So, Julie, what, is, what do they need to do now? Well, they can, uh, as you said, check out the links to other videos. They can like, comment, or subscribe, or don't forget to click the notification button to find out when we release new content. So we're going to grab our drinks, grab our best friend, and we're going to keep playing games. We are. I think we need to find a, a new co-op deck builder that we can try out. I'm happy to keep playing Legendary. I know, but... Uh, it kind of gets dull for the channel if all we're talking about is uh, legendary. Yeah, we've reviewed them now. <laughs>